Let me ask you a question. What price would you put on a human life? Well, according to the US, it's $7,000. That's the average yearly cost for health insurance. The US spends more on healthcare than any other country, yet ranks last in quality of care amongst wealthy nations and still charges its citizens for treatment. It's a system run entirely by profit that overcharges patients by billions each year and where the science changes depending on who is profiting off it. In the US, medical personnel are treated as celebrities, not professionals, where people like Anthony Fauci are seen as saviors to some and are cursed as villains by others. So why is the system so broken? Of course, it's got everything to do with money and how a handful of companies have turned healthcare into a trillion dollar scam that only values profits instead of human lives. To almost all foreigners, the US healthcare system looks like a complete dumpster fire. Yet to a lot of Americans, this seems normal and to some even kind of great. But in reality, this is far from normal. And first, I just want to share some stats that will illustrate just how bad the situation in the US really is. In Canada, a vial of insulin costs around $30, but in the United States, the same medication made in the same factory costs 10 times as much. In Australia, the HIV drug Truvada costs $8. In the US, well, it's $2,000. With such high costs, health insurance in the US is considered almost essential. But even when insured, many Americans still have trouble paying their medical bills. 63% reported using up most or all their savings to pay for treatment and over 40% had to get a second job to just cover the costs. The high cost of healthcare is such a massive problem. It's estimated two thirds of all personal bankruptcies in the US are tied to medical expenses, which amounts to over half a million families going bankrupt each year. But this isn't normal in the rest of the world. As of today, the US is the only developed country on earth without universal healthcare. And even in the developing world, many poorer countries already provide free healthcare to citizens. Some examples include Iran, Botswana, Cuba, Rwanda, and Pakistan. Now, as someone who has lived her whole entire life in places with free healthcare, this seems insane to me. So why is the US still so resistant to something that so many people consider as a basic human right? As you might expect, it has everything to do with manipulation by big business, and it's health insurers who are the first players in this big healthcare scam of America. This is a relatively normal medical bill in the US, over $360,000 for an 11 day stay in hospital. Thankfully, this patient had insurance to help them deal with the immense cost. Firstly, the insurance company negotiated a discount on the hospital bill of around $260,000, leaving just $100,000 remaining. Insurance then covered almost all of this, leaving just $104 for the patient, saving them from paying a devastating financial cost. But here's the thing, the discount the insurance company negotiated is a scam created in partnerships with hospitals hospitals to make you believe that expensive health insurance is a good deal. One of the main selling points of US health insurance is that insurance companies are great at negotiating prices with hospitals, potentially saving patients thousands on their bills. Until recently, it was a very closely guarded secret what someone with insurance would pay for a certain service compared to someone without it. In short, everyone just had to take insurance companies on their word. But in 2020, the federal government ordered hospitals to release the price lists of services they negotiated with insurance insurers. And immediately, it was obvious why they didn't want this information to be public. At one hospital, a colonoscopy for a person without insurance cost $782, but with insurance, over $2,000, almost three times the price. Or at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital, a pregnancy test without insurance costs only $10, but if you're insured, that same test costs almost 10 times more. Or as one news outlet put it simply, in many cases, insured patients are getting prices that are higher than they would if they pretended to have no coverage at all. All. In other words, the insurance companies are basically full of and the only reason that the discount looks so high that they've negotiated with hospitals is because they have a higher listed price in the first place, conning Americans into believing that they are getting a valuable service. Now, it is possible to negotiate these medical bills by yourself. However, this is another place where price manipulation happens so that the industry can ensure only insurance companies can play the game fairly. In one example, an uninsured man was billed for over $31,000 for around an hour of treatment. He wanted to negotiate a discount 
account, but because he wasn't insured, he had to do this by himself. But even though insurance companies regularly receive an 80% discount for treatment at the same hospital, they refused to give him the same discount, offering him a maximum discount of only 43%. The reason? According to one doctor, it was because the patient didn't have representation. In reality, this is the main benefit of being insured in the US, so that a hospital will agree to give you the lowest rate on care because you're a member of the insurance company's club. Or as one author put it, if you don't buy health insurance, hospitals have agreed to penalize you by putting a surcharge of several hundred percent on your medical bill. And due to the fact that there are almost no laws requiring reasonable pricing in healthcare, hospitals can effectively legally extort money from patients with these penalties. Basically, hospitals and insurance companies act like a mafia protection racket, and if you don't pay up to the insurance companies for protection, you risk being bankrupted or having your life ruined by huge medical bills. Now, at this point, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how this compares to your own medical system in your own country. And if you are American, I'd love to know your thoughts on what is going on at home. Now, in a moment, I'm going to share more about the insane price manipulation that is happening in the healthcare system. But first, I just want to mention we have an incredible newsletter of 65,000 people getting extra financial and freedom nuggets through beautifully written stories. There's a link down below. Okay, now back to the video. Now, aside from insurance, the price that Americans pay for healthcare is manipulated in many different areas. And a lot of this happens in what you would assume is basic essential healthcare, for example, childbirth and emergency visits. In the US, roughly 10,000 babies are born every day and about a third of them by C-section. This rate of C-section births is more than twice the global average, which is generally between 10 to 15%. So why is this so high? Well, according to reports, this has nothing to do with the well-being of the mother and the child. And quite simply, it's because hospitals get paid $5,000 on average more for performing a C-section compared to a natural birth, meaning doctors are incentivized to slice women open, even when it's unnecessary. And do you want to hold your baby after that C-section? The hospital may bill you for that as well, adding $40 to your tab for skin-to-skin -skin contact. This overcharging exists in almost every area of the medical system, even in life-threatening emergency visits. In the US, ER visits are coded by severity and given a number between one and five. The higher the level, the more a hospital gets paid. Over the past two decades, hospitals and doctors have learned there's great profit in upcoding visits. And over a seven-year period, level five visits for injured people grew steadily by 45%, putting more money in the pockets of hospitals. And really, very little can be done to stop this practice, because as one publication put it, the insurer isn't in the exam room to know what transpired. Now, you might think that this apparent corruption is the fault of the staff themselves, but before you grab a pitchfork, let's look at the real culprits behind this profit mongering. And as you might expect, the suspects are the companies that I've spoken about many times on this channel before. Unlike most of the rest of the world, the entire US healthcare system is for profit, meaning it exists to make money, not to serve people's needs. Blackstone is one of the largest investment firms on the planet. In the US, it owns Team Health, the nation's largest medical staffing company. Basically, if you go to hospital in the US, chances are your doctor or nurse is employed by them. Team Health is known for massively overcharging customers, with prices higher than 95% of other providers and nine times more than Medicare. And according to its own staff, this is all done by design, with one of Team Health's own executives saying the actual cost of treatment isn't a factor in how the company sets its prices, meaning Team Health can charge whatever they want for care, resulting in billions flowing back to Blackstone and the company's rich investors. Overall, Americans really only have the illusion of choice when it comes to their health decisions, because almost every publicly traded hospital, medical, and pharma company is owned at least in part by one of the two companies. The names are BlackRock and Vanguard, companies you've likely heard of before. And together, they're amongst the largest shareholders of the entire US healthcare system. System. Effectively, these companies have almost complete control over the entire US healthcare system. <laughs> And it's really hard to imagine that these for-profit investment firms aren't abusing the system for their own financial gain. And whenever there is abuse, there's always a victim. And as always, it's usually the poorest people in society that suffer the most. Rising costs means that over a decade, the number of people without health insurance in the US has risen by over 35%, meaning many in the US don't seek healthcare when needed because they simply can't afford it. Increasingly, stories are circulating of Americans begging not to be taken to hospitals, even 
even when seriously injured, with some seizure sufferers going so far as to wear a bracelet saying, do not call an ambulance, because they can't afford the thousand dollar plus cost of a ride to the hospital. In the US today, 75% of women who seek abortions already live below the poverty line. But with the recent overturning of Roe versus Wade, economists say their situation is likely to get much worse. Because it's most likely the poorest in society that will now be forced to carry unwanted pregnancies to full term or engage in dangerous medical procedures in order to abort. While wealthier women will be more likely to be able to afford to travel to a different state or country for an abortion. Something that for those living in poverty might not be an option. So there is a lot of evidence to show that the US healthcare system is really broken. But there are so many Americans that actually adore the US healthcare system and support it wholeheartedly. And this has probably something to do with the billions of dollars spent every single year by the medical industry on advertising and PR. And this allows them to construct a narrative to keep things exactly the way they are. In the US, the medical and pharmaceutical industry spends more on lobbying than any other by a big margin, spending double what the largest industry does each year, ensuring that they can get laws written to ensure that they can make as much profit as possible. They also spend billions in advertising each year, attempting to convince Americans the system works. But if it worked, the numbers wouldn't tell such a depressing story. Among the world's wealthy nations, life expectancy in the US is dropping the fastest. It's the only developed country where the maternal mortality rate when a mother dies during or after childbirth is increasing, not dropping. Where medical error is the third largest killer in the country, accounting for 10% of all deaths each year, and where 92% of physicians admit they make decisions to avoid lawsuits instead of primarily for the good health of patients. In short, the reality is this. Where I live in Iceland, or the country I was born in, Australia, or practically any developed country on earth, I could cut off my finger on purpose and not worry about the financial costs. I would just go to hospital and get treated, and I wouldn't have to second guess whether I have insurance or not, and I wouldn't have to worry afterwards about a medical bill coming in and potentially bankrupting me. However, it is in the United States where this is almost exclusively not the case, and hopefully by now you can see who is responsible for this situation happening. So let me ask you again, what price would you put on a human life? Well, according to the US healthcare system, it seems that no price is too high. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder about our incredible newsletter that you are going to just love. Link in the description. Also, if you found some value out of this video, consider sharing it and also subscribing. We would love to have you here. And we have an amazing finance and freedom membership we would love to have you part of. Link in the description to find out more. And I will see you in the next one.